Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. This is the fifth tutorial in our series of beginners Java tutorials. And in this tutorial, we're going to look at for loops. Um, I'm going to create a new Java project in Eclipse as usual. And I'm going to call this tutorial 5. Click next. Um, yes, and finish. And I'm going to create a new class. I'll call this application. It doesn't really matter as long as it's got um, a capital letter um, at the start there. Click finish. I will create a main method here by typing main control space and hitting return. And I didn't really explain this properly last time, but um, if you've got badly formatted code like this, if you just press Control, Shift, and F. That will automatically format your code for you. Or if you if you forget the shortcut, you can also just go to just right click and go to Source and go to Format. Okay. So this is a runnable application, and I'm going to type here the keyword for, and uh, I'm going to have opening and closing round brackets. Um, which are going to con um, contain the conditions that control how many times the loop will execute for. And then I'll have opening and closing curly brackets, which will control, uh, well, which is where we will put the code that we want to execute. Um, the reason I'm getting an error here is because um, inside the round brackets, I need at least two semicolons like this. Um, why you'll see in a minute. And I'm going to type system.out.println and I'll just put hello in there so that we've got some code to execute. And if I execute this, it's just an infinite loop that will go on until I stop it with the terminate button here. Now, what this actually is, is um, these semicolons divide um, the stuff in here into three sections and in the first section I can um, the first section contains code that executes before the loop starts so before this will actually be printed in this case and in there I can declare and initialize a loop counter variable I can say int um, i uh, is traditional equals zero and then in the second, the second clause here is um, a condition, and as long as this condition is true, the loop will execute. So I could say, for example, i less than five, and as long as i is less than five, um, this loop will run. And here, this is a condition that will be executed once after every iteration of the loop. Um, so I could put i equals yeah, equals i plus 1. So I'm saying um, take the value of i, add 1 to it, and then stuff it back in i itself so that with every repeat of the loop i will be incremented. And a shorthand way of increasing i by 1 is to type i plus plus which is very handy. Um, so now we've got kind of a standard for loop and if I run that it will execute five times. So the first time i is zero and then uh, the conditions checked i is less than five yes so this is printed out and then this is executed so now i is one. Um, this is not executed again this is only executed before the loop starts for the first time so what happens next is, this is checked, i is less than 5, yes, because it's 1, so this is printed again. i is incremented, um, i is checked again, this is printed out, and so on, until i is equal to 5, and then this is no longer true, and the loop then will stop, and it will not go into here, it will just um, stop. Um, there's, um, there's one other interesting thing that I'd like to show you here. 
um, that we'll maybe get into a bit more later on. Um, if I want to print out the value of i here, I can say, well, I could say, for example, um, i, the value of i is, and just add concatenate i to it, and i will be automatically changed into a string in effect and uh, appended to this string and we'll get this. But there's another way of doing this um, that you will definitely come across. Um, instead of print ln, I can use print f and the, this is a method that requires I have to pass two what we call arguments to it and the first argument is a string a format specifier and the second argument is um, is a value um, to to fill in the format specifier. I know this is sounding like gobbledygook. In fact there can be there might be many arguments. Um, but what is a format specifier? Well so the format specifier is a string that can contain special characters, special symbols actually, that will then be replaced by the numbers or variables that you have here. And I'm just going to show you one for this tutorial. So the format specifiers begin with percent and they end in a letter. And the letter for an integer that you need is D. So percent D means, okay, print this string, but replace percent D with the value of the integer specified here after the comma every time. And if I run this, um, you get this output. And why is it all on one line? Well, because unlike print ln, printf does not print out a invisible new line character by default. So it doesn't make the output go onto a new line. And that's sometimes very useful, um, but other times it's not. And if you actually want to print a new line here, there's two ways you can do it. One, one way is you can have a just a blank sys out here, so I could type sys out control space and that will have the desired effect. Or I'll get rid of that with control D. I can type another special character, well special special character sequence here, backslash n, which means new line. Um, this is a lot to digest, but um, try it in your own program, see if you can get this to work. Um, remember percent %d just gets replaced with the value of the variable you specify here and slash n just means print a new line. I could print, I could actually put um, slash n anywhere if I wanted. I could have a slash n here or whatever. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be at the end. So um, that's it for this tutorial. Um, uh, I hope um, you can get your head around for loops and as always I advise not pondering about it for too long but just try typing it out and see if you can get it to work and see what errors come up and fix them and get your loops working and because programming is like learning a language as I keep saying so until next time um, enjoy uh, using for loops and I hope you'll join me again for the next tutorial uh, when we will be looking at conditionals a bit more and the if statement. And until then, happy coding.